You guys, let me report my husband to you. He's going to buy fuel for my car. And I told him to just take one of his offsprings, right? Cora was here helping me. And I was like, just go with one of your offsprings. <laughs> because I like to include our kids or I want us to include our kids more in our activities, okay? Like every aspect of our activities, especially his. So I was like, take one of your offsprings. Tell me why he took my assistant, Cora. Why did he take my Cora? <laughs> Why did he take one of those ones that look like him that don't send me? The one that sends me, the one that really, really, you know, helps me the most is the one he now took. Eh? And now I need water. <laughs> anyway, hi guys, what's up? You guys, I filmed this video that I'm about to film now. I filmed it before and the audio turned out to be rubbish, total rubbish. During that period, I noticed that I was more tired. Like I was yawning, I'll be yawning, <laughs> when I say yawning, I'll be yawning like I want to swallow my, my family. Like, however, I couldn't keep my eyes open. In fact, I thought my eyes were open. <laughs> and it's been annoying me, but you know, we move, okay? But let me just check this audio first before my enemies will win again. Um, yeah, so basically, in one of my videos, somebody asked me about the healthcare system in the UK because I mentioned something about how mm, mm, everybody says, oh, one of the reasons why the Japa, one of the reasons why, you know, abroad is good is because of the healthcare system. The healthcare system abroad is this, is that, which I agree, okay? I agree to a large extent. However, are we not overrating it to an extent? Mm, I don't know. I feel like some things here are being overrated. I feel like it's not all that it's cracked up to be. But I haven't been in the UK long enough or I haven't interacted with the medical system here long enough or more intensely or intensely enough to give you like a, a good overview of how everything works here and whether it is as good as it say it is or give you a breakdown of all the lapses and stuff like that. Okay, so yes, I came here in December, technically this year. Okay, I came December 26. So technically I came this year. And I've been here for eight months. However, in my eight months of being here, I have interacted with them in different capacities. And I want to just tell you guys my experience and what I think generally about the healthcare system in the UK. Now, welcome to my channel. This is Adese's Space. This is where I share my personal thoughts and my personal life experiences and my family life with you guys. Okay, so... Whenever I do sit down videos like this, whenever I do story time videos or talking videos like this, I know they rush, okay? I know they rush because I feel like I'm just in with my friends, you know, you guys are in my corner, you're in my space and I'm just in with you guys. This is not NTN News, this is not CNN, so don't come and expect me, or this is not a medical channel, <laughs> so don't come and expect me to just stick to the storyline, get to the point, eh -eh. Yeah, my first interaction with the medical system started from, or let me put it this way, Something happened to me in December that spiraled and, you know, got me going to the hospital several times, which made me interact with the medical system here, okay? Um, so, the two people who particularly have really, really gone to the hospital several times here are me and Sophia. And funnily enough, when we first arrived here and registered with the NHS and stuff like that, first of all, me and Sophia were the ones who were registered immediately or who got our numbers and stuff and everything immediately Sophia and I are the only people who have received multiple letters <laughs> multiple letters here and I'm just like I have other children and I have a husband why are you guys not paying that much attention to them anyway I kind of get it because of Sophia's age and maybe because I'm a woman I think um yeah like I'm basically so I think our ages have I have something to do with it um so when I got here in December, or before I got here in December, you guys know how I was bounced at the airport. I wasn't allowed to travel when I was supposed to travel. And then I, you know, went back home and then came back and traveled, right? Came back a few days and traveled. So first of all, our bags were very, very heavy. I carried complete, all the, all our allowance, I carried everything. I didn't carry everything in terms of weight, but all the 12 bags I before, I don't I can't remember how many bags I even carried. Everybody three bags each, including hand luggage, like, <laughs> including a backpack or something, like, I carried for everybody, so we had quite a number of heavy bags, and I was carrying them 
mostly on my own. But the when we now finally traveled, I was alone with my kids. I was carrying a backpack. I was carrying hand luggage. I was holding Sophia, like all these things. And I was feeling pain in my arms. But, you know, you know when you're just having that adrenaline rush and you're just trying to, you know... Just, you know, do you focus on your focus, basically. Just trying to get things done. I didn't really think about the fact that my hand was paining me, but I was like, yeah. And also, I've always had, like, I don't know what to call it. I don't even know the condition, because I even went to Igbo before it when I was younger. I don't know what the condition is, but my joints are very, very flexible, okay? So, not flexible in a good way. <laughs> not flexible like, oh, I can do gymnastics. Eh, eh. Flexible in the sense that my shoulder can just dislocate on its own, okay? Like, it has happened to me several times. I've dealt with it several times. And, in fact, if I sleep wrongly, my shoulder can dislocate, either this one or this one, or my joints will start aching me, you know? I've always had it since I was younger. It's funny how I've never really sought, like, proper, proper care for it in old, as I'm old, I wouldn't say old age, whatever. But as I'm older, I've not really sought proper, proper care for it. Maybe I should, actually. But I've had it happen to me several times. So when that shoulder was paining me, I was like, oh, okay, it will go after a few days. So when we got to the UK here, the pain was so intense. You guys, this hand, the pain was so intense. I couldn't sleep on this side of my body. And, I, and I'm, I'm used to sleeping on this side of my body because of pregnancies. They tell you to sleep on your left side. So I'm used to sleeping on my left side. Um, so imagine always sleeping on your left side and then waking up in the middle of the night with severe pain, my joint, my shoulder. This one will dislocate too, eh? Anytime it dislocates... I do some exercises, I stretch, I stretch, I stretch, and then you will hear it click back, right? So, and once it clicks clicks back, the pain just subsides, 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 subsides. <laughs> the pain subsides, yeah, whenever I do that. But for this one, I did exercise. I rolled my hand, rolled my hand, did, because I, I have a specific exercise I do, shoulder exercises and stuff that I do, and to click back. The thing never clicked back. That pain was always constant. Now, during the day, it wasn't as bad as at night, right? So, during the day, with the pain, I was still doing several things, you know, taking care of my kids, doing everything I needed to do. But at night, that pain was more intense. And I didn't want to admit to myself that I was having an issue because I felt like that guy that sent us back at the airport is the real cause. I don't want to give him any glory. Okay, that's part of why I didn't even share the story since. I just like, so that guy now in his mind, he will think that he has done something to me. Eh? Anyway, whatever. So yeah, I will complain to my husband. He will tell me, go to hospital now. Like, just go to the hospital. I'll be like, hey, you, when you have issues, do you go? <laughs> when he has issues, I tell him, go to the hospital. He will tell me, nah, he's fine. I will see him struggling. Though. He will tell me he doesn't need any medicine. He doesn't take medicine, he doesn't go to the hospital. But you know how it is now. It's always easy to tell another person what to do than for you to take your own advice. So he will tell me, just go to the hospital. Like, why are you? I'll be like, no, I don't want to go to the hospital. Blah, 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 blah. So I was still dealing with that pain. Now keep that one aside. Then, okay, so when we got here and we registered with the NHS and we got the letter. So the letters were basically telling us, oh, you guys have been registered, this and that, um, but that they will come and check on Sophia, and that Sophia also needed to come for immunization. That's one thing they're very good with here, okay? They can remind you for immunization, left, right, and center, over and over again. I want to write a letter to them and tell them to stop asking me to bring Sophia for immunization because she has taken all the doses she's supposed to take at her age according to our immunization card that we got from Nigeria. So all the booster, this booster, two booster, one dip, one dip, two that they, they are sending us letters for, I am not interested, okay? And what even made me a little bit irritated was when I took Sophia, okay, so I went to the hospital. I'm jumping the gun a lot, but you guys just relax and grab your snacks, okay? I forgot to say it at the beginning. Go and grab your snacks. This is going to be a long video. Maybe not, maybe. Anyway, so when, when they first sent us letters that Sophia should come for immunization, I took her to the hospital, to the clinic, because what they have here is you are assigned, you are assigned to a GP, or basically you search for a GP or something, but basically you get the one that's closest to you. You can't really live here and go and get a GP in another city or another uh, uh, postal uh, code or something. Anyway, so you are assigned to a GP in a medical practice. So that medical practice is just like a small clinic, Nothing serious there. They just do some jabs here and there, some checkups here and there. Um, you meet your GP there. Then if you now need to go to the major hospital or you need a consultant or whatever, they will now refer you, okay? So I remember that thing kind of confused me a little bit when I first came because 
I'll be in the hospital and they'll say like, okay, we can refer you to the hospital. And I'm like, okay, so where am I? Like, <laughs> anyway. So after you're assigned to a GP, then you will now start having correspondence or whatever. You, If you have any issues, you report to the GP first and or the, the practice first. And then they now refer you if they need to refer you or they'll tell you what you need to do. So when they sent us a letter about Sophia's immunization, I took her... Um, card, her immunization card from Nigeria, I took it there. And mind you, the hospital we had in Nigeria was wonderful hospital. It was, you know, like world standard kind of hospital. So I don't have any fears that, oh, they didn't write the right thing. Or they didn't. In Nigeria, I don't even think that, even if you go to a public hospital or whatever, I, th I don't think they will not write what they're supposed to take or whatever. So I was very, very sure that Sophia was on point. There was only one that was left out, and that was because when she was supposed to take it in Nigeria, they did not have it. They told me to come back later. And then I can't remember what happened. Then we came to the UK. So when I got there, I showed them her immunization card. And they took it and photocopied it. And told me they would get back to me with, you know, what she's supposed to come and take. So they got back to me and said she's supposed to come and take, I think, MMR or something. I was like, okay, fine. I took her to the hospital. I checked. I thought that she had got the MMR before. But it's supposed to be MMR1, MMR1 and 2. So she had gotten the 1 before. She had not gotten the 2. So I got to the hospital and they gave her the immunization. They told me she's coming for MMR. I was like, okay, fine. So they gave her the, the, the jab. And then the next thing the lady says is, um, okay, that I should come in within four weeks for her to take the second dose. I was like, no, she's taking one dose before. This is supposed to be the second dose. She was like, yeah, we don't have record of that here. I was like, okay. But that it doesn't even matter if she has gotten it before, that she can always still take it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't cause any harm. I'm like, you must think you are talking to a, 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 a mugu. <laughs> I'm not a medical doctor. I am not a nurse. I'm not in the medical field in any way, shape or form. But you cannot tell me that injecting my child with something does not have any implication. If she not, even if she has gotten it before, you can get three or four. Like, no. Medication is medication. Okay, jab is jab. Like, even if, yes, technically it can be safe, you don't want to be exposing the child to several different jabs if they don't need it. What do you mean? What are you talking about? So, when she said that thing, I was just like, oh, you want to use my child and make money, Abby, because I know that they pay them for that thing. His medical system is free, it's free. It's not that free, okay? They pay them for all those things. So, that's why they're always on point with immunization because they get money for it, okay? And, and me, based on my personal research and my convictions about certain things now, I even wish I did not give Sophia or I didn't take my kids for all the jobs that they got even in Nigeria, okay? Now, I am not advising you in any way, shape or form not to immunize your kids or take your kids for immunization. That is not what I'm advocating here, right? I'm just saying for me and my personal beliefs, I wish I hadn't taken my kids for some of the jobs that they took, okay? Thankfully, my kids are all over, over all of those things. They've taken everything and they are fine. Nobody has any issues with any of those things, right? But knowing the risks, now that I know the risks, knowing the risks, knowing the, knowing the implication, knowing the... I don't want to go too deep into it, okay? Because, again, this decision is something you should take with a lot of research on your part, okay? So don't ask me, oh, should I take my child for immunization? Should I allow my child be... Don't ask me, like, it's not a conversation that you should be having with a random person on the internet is something that you should go and do your research about and based on your own findings and what you think you can take your child for it or not for it okay but i'm saying that me based on what me i feel right now i shouldn't have but thankfully you know we're over it now i'm definitely sure they're going to take the hpv ones i don't even want to joke with that thing but i'm just saying like i should have been more attentive to the jobs that they were giving my children as they were younger i shouldn't have just trusted the medical system just blindly like that okay yeah like i could go into this maybe one day on a live i would discuss my reservations with the medical system in the world okay it's not just in nigeria or in uk i'm now beginning to see yeah, everything is not as clean as we think we shouldn't be just as trusting as we are of the medical system anywhere okay and i mean it's in all honesty, even here in the UK, whether they are top of the art or state of the art or they are the best in the world, you should not trust the medical system here or anywhere with a 100%, you know, uh, certainty or trust or whatever. Don't do it, okay? They have some very serious politics and issues and lapses that makes them 
basically overlook what they're supposed to be doing, okay? I don't want to go too deep into this, I don't want to go too deep into, the, into it, but for me, oh, if it's not surgery that they're doing for you, where they're trying to put your bone back together or put your intestine back together, if it's not like literal surgery or literal, like, healing your body, literally, when it comes to medication, drugs, lifestyle choices and stuff like that, yeah. But anyway, I digress. So, that's about it for the immunization part. They are very on point with it here. They are going to keep sending you letters to remind you that your child needs to come in and get injection and get the jab, okay? They are going to keep reminding you, which is a good thing if you are someone who wants it. But for me, I don't want her to take any more, especially since you can be flippant about it and say it doesn't matter if she... Yeah, it doesn't matter if I should just bring in my child for you, for you to be injecting her with all the liquid in your, in your hospital. Please, I beg. Anyway... Um, a NHS or an NHS um, assistant or something came here to see Sophia, okay, to visit Sophia, like visit us basically, but to see Sophia, talk with her, check her milestones and all of that, right? So we had a chat, very good chat. She gave me different kind of advice, talked to me about different things, checked Sophia, checked her milestones, recorded some things about her and then left, okay? So I feel like if, for instance, God forbid, Sophia had some developmental issues or stuff like that, that woman would have detected it, okay? Even if I was oblivious to it or even if I was ignorant about it, that woman, my assistant is back. <laughs> that uh, lady that came here would have detected it, okay? Which is fantastic because if you're in a country like Nigeria where nobody sends your papa, you can have a child, especially if it's your first child, you can have a child with serious developmental issues and nobody will know. Maybe your family members can say it here or there, but no medical professional would know, especially if you do not like take the child for checkup, right? But in this case, because they came to our house to see us, even if we didn't even invite them or anything, if Sophia had any issues, they would have known and they would have acted on it, which is mind-blowing, okay? So I give them 10 over 10 for that. I totally, totally appreciate it um so now aside that i also got a letter that i should come for cervical screening which was also fantastic okay even though they did not ask me whether i've done it before and i've actually done it before and i think for my age it's still within the three three years um what is the name range where you do it every three years but i think as you get older you do it every year or you do it less i can't remember is that you do it more as you get older or you do it less as you get older um but anyway they called me for cervical screening and i went and i did it that is pap smear basically um so i went i i got the pap smear done and i got the result everything is fine and i was happy okay so that's another plus that they just prompted me to come and do it unprovoked okay but in nigeria now you go go hospital go ask them for it or if you go to hospital for one thing they might now discover that you have another thing before they will not say let them do pap smear for you but here they did not wait for me to on my own come in for it they invited me to come and do it so i also applaud them for that 10 over 10 minus nothing so i've also gone to the hospital to check my iud because i got my iud put in in december before i came here and when i came here it was like six weeks after or seven weeks after i was supposed to check it out i was supposed to go and check it at six weeks but i already came here so at i think seven or eight weeks here if i calculate it seven or eight weeks after i got my iud done that was still the early weeks when i got here i went to the hospital to go and check it now when i went to the hospital normally in my hospital in nigeria when they want to check your iud they just do an ultrasound scan for you and they just check your tummy and see that oh everything is still where it's supposed to be and you stand up and go but not in the uk here that's their a uh, uh, community center what do you call it <laughs> that's their practice the medical center what do they call it yeah whatever the practice here they don't get ultrasound though you're gonna open up they're gonna look inside with speculum and all those things they're gonna literally look inside <laughs> so I was so I was so uncomfortable that day because normally, depending on the procedure I am going for, I dress accordingly. So if I'm going for ultrasound, I wear leggings so that you can just pull the leggings down and you can do the ultrasound. But if I am going for um, the normal, like like pap smear for instance, I usually wear a gown so I can just pull my gown up. So but this time I wore a leggings. I didn't know I was supposed to. 
open up. So I had to now remove my leggings and all that. I mean, nothing to be ashamed of, but I was just like, oh, I wasn't prepared for this. I wasn't mentally prepared for it. You know, I was wondering why they did not just do ultrasound for me. But from what I've heard about abroad, abroad generally, they are not the first to just jump and start doing ultrasound for everything. Even when you're pregnant, they don't just jump to ultrasound. Like Nigeria, you can do scan 100 times. Nobody cares. Nobody will say, don't do, don't you know, do. But here, they're not, it's not their first option to do scan for you. So I understand that, okay? Uh, what else have I gone to hospital for? Aha, uh -huh. so now the major reason that took me to the hospital. Now, I remember my hand issue. That one is still aside though. So, I've been feeling very tired for a very, very long time, okay? Like, uh, you guys, I've been literally tired for a very long time. I don't even want to call it depression. It's not depression, okay? But it can be depressive. Let me put it that way. It can be depressive, always feeling down and tired forget all this upbeat personality and laughing and joking that i do here or like in between i always have crashes okay i mean go for no i don't have crashes in jesus name but you guys get the point i used to have crashes i don't have in jesus name <laughs> i used to have this period of i'm upbeat right now the next minute i am so exhausted i want to sleep nobody should talk to me i want to just be on my own the next minute i'm happy i'm laughing i'm having fun i'm going out to my kids i'm meeting friends the next minute I want to just crawl inside my bed, cover my, my head with blankets and just stay in silence, okay? I think I struggled more with it here because I did not have the outlets I had in Nigeria. Here, I was just being constantly overstimulated, okay? Constantly, con like it's just a normal thing now for me to be constantly overstimulated. Now, I have adjusted to it though. But in Nigeria, I've always had escape. When I was younger, I used to go and sleep when everybody's in pile of gisting. Like, if everybody's gisting laughing, I'll just maple and go and sleep, right? When I was in university, I was always looking for alone spaces. Even when I stayed with multiple people in the same room, I remember how I just told you guys how in secondary school, I would leave my hostel in the morning and go and stay in commandant's area, like near the principal, near the office blocks. I'll go and stay there alone. I just want my alone time. I'll come back and laugh and teach everybody and dance. So, like, I was always dancing. <laughs> But that my alone time was very important for me. So, so getting here and never really having that time to just decompress, I was always tired, always feeling irritable. I don't even know how I manage, okay? Because I'm very good at working through my issues, right? I'm just doing what I need to do when I have to do it. But it was I was now getting it more constantly. But even though I was feeling that way, I was always rationalizing it in my head that oh the reason why i'm like this is because like all the things i just said now were the reasons i was giving myself as to why i was constantly tired i was like the reason why i'm tired is because i need to go and stay i used to visualize going to a hotel room and just stay for for one weekend at least or friday to sunday friday to monday so i'll just stay alone in peace silence no laptop no phone no nothing <laughs> no nothing close all my social media just disappear i used to fantasize about it right so i always give that as a, as a reason why i was feeling tired but the tiredness was not like normal tiredness again it was not getting too much but what now broke the camel's back or what now jabbed me into reality was there was a day that I went to see one of my friends, right? So I have a friend here who just moved to Norwich recently. I talked to you guys about how I went to check out their house and stuff like that for them before they moved in, like house to see the house before they now moved in. So when they came here, you know, I, I would go to her house, my kids would play with her kids, you know, we'll just be gisting. Fun times, right? So, I mean, it's supposed to be fun times. But I noticed that I'll go to her house, I'll be yawning, yawning like, like, like a pregnant woman, like I was always, I'll just be yawning, I'll be lethargic, I'll be slow, I'll be gisting with her, and she'll be talking, and I'll find out that, I'll see myself, eh, getting into consciousness, I don't know how, I don't know, I don't know if you guys understand it, like, I won't know I'm drifting away, until maybe she'll say something, and I'll just now get jolted into reality, right, or maybe a kid will shout somewhere, I'll not remember that way too, I'm actually here, I'm actually supposed to be, you know, looking out for my kids but i don't even think she noticed initially right so i'll be she was talking to me i'll be doing mm, mm, mm. <laughs> exactly <laughs> then i'll just drift away then she'll now say something i'll now be like eh, yeah true mm. but if you ask me what she said the last few sentences i did not hear it right so that was going on but i just kept not paying attention to it right until there was a particular day she was talking to me and I literally was sleeping off in front of her, right? 
Now, I'm someone that I used to like sleep a lot when I was younger. I just told you guys how everybody would be in the part of this thing, and I would just maple, just walk away silently and go and sleep. I used to take naps even in university. Like, I would just leave class and go to my room and go and sleep, right? So, I used to like sleep a lot, but with pregnancies and children and all of that, multiple times, back to, not back to back, but, you know, multiple times, sleep, I don't even know what sleep is anymore. Like, plus my YouTube channel and staying very up, staying, staying up very late, editing and, you know, chatting with or um, communicating with companies and stuff like that. I don't know what sleep is anymore. So, I'm not someone who just sleeps off easily again. So, it was very shocking for me when, or shocking to me when she was talking to me and I just started dozing off, like, literally, literally. Imagine just with somebody and the person is literally sleeping. In the afternoon, no, this is not like evening, uh, everywhere is dim because I'm just chatting. So, she was even like, oh, don't worry, you're, you're already feeling sleepy. Just lie down and sleep, okay? Like, you just lie down and rest, you know, while the kids play. And I was like, no, 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 yeah, no, no, I'm awake, no, I'm awake, no, I'm not sleeping again, I'm awake, I'm awake, <laughs> right? But that was what basically gave me a reality check, okay? I was like, no, something is definitely wrong. This is not normal again. This is not just in my head. This is not just, oh, I don't have, like, this is not just de being depressed, depressive or whatever. This is a physical issue. So when I told my husband, he was like, hey, when I saw go to the hospital, I was like, Oga, I'm going to the hospital now, okay? Don't worry, relax. So I went to the hospital to book an appointment to see the doctor, okay? Now, I also used that opportunity to book an appointment to see the doctor for Sophia because Sophia has a hernia. Actually, she has two. I've known since she was born. The doctor even told me when they did scan before she was, like while I was pregnant, during one of the scans, that was when my doctor told me then, okay? So I've always known she had a hernia in her navel and it's not really a problem. Her navel is bigger than normal, but... It's not really a problem because my husband said he had it as a child, but right now his navel is like flat, perfect, right? So he said he had, had it as a child. Even me, I had big navel as a child, even my younger sister, but now our navels are perfect. So the navel part is not really what bothers me, but what bothers me is the fact that she is a she's a, she's female and she's going to get pregnant someday. And I know that hernias are usually worse with pregnancies, with some pregnancies, okay? I don't know, not everybody has it, but some people that have it, when they are pregnant, it gets worse. So that's what is making me a little bit worried or a little bit like cautious uh, or, you know, a little bit more attentive about it, right? Not, not worried, I'm not worried, but just a little bit more attentive because of it. And for vanity reasons as well, okay, let me not even lie. For vanity reasons, but basically because she, she, I don't want her to have, why should she have a hernia? She doesn't have to have it, right? So I was like, okay, let's just go to the hospital. Let me talk to the doctor. Let them see her and let them know whether she will need any intervention now that she's still young. Because I don't want, maybe now, when she's 15 or 16 or maybe when she's about to have a child or something, they will now say, oh, if only your mother had taken you to the hospital when you were younger. Any intervention. Hey, I don't want to hear if only. That is why... This is not my first time taking her to the hospital for it, though. But this is why I'm like, I'm still going to make sure. Let them, let me be sure, like that it's okay that she doesn't need to, she doesn't, need, she doesn't need to do anything about it. While I still pray, though, I'm actually praying about it. Okay, like I don't even want the hospital to 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 treat her or anything. Like let's just go on its own, right? But you know, I still need to do the human side of it and just to make sure that everything is fine. So when I got to the hospital that day, I told them about it. They said, okay, they're going to book her for triage that day or put her in the triage. I don't know. That was, I thought I, I had triage or something like that. But I basically, the doctor was going to call us that day. Now, the mistake I made was that I did not remember that the number we used to register my kids and stuff was my husband's phone number. Okay, that was a mistake I made when we first came. I was using his number for almost everything. I mean, both of us had SIMs, but I just kept using his own. I don't know why. So, but now I've gone back now, I started changing all those things, even in schools and stuff, I started changing it back to my number because I'm the primary caregiver, I'm the um, default parent, basically. So, it's supposed to be me that I'm supposed to be calling for all of these things, not my husband when he's at work. So, but that day I didn't know, so they called my husband while he was at work and he did not pick and that was it. So, they didn't call for anything again. I was thinking, okay, they will call us back or they will send us a letter saying, oh, we called, when should we reschedule and all of that. I didn't hear PIM, I didn't hear nada. So, I was like, okay. I have to go back and go and reschedule. So I went back and rescheduled. And then that's when I now booked my own appointment, actually. The first time was only for her, I did. But the second time, I now booked my own appointment. I remember my husband saying, so you can go to hospital to go and book appointment for Sophia. 
but you cannot just book your own immediately. <laughs> but that's because I was just dodging going to the hospital. So that was the next time I now booked my own and her own. So they said we are going to see both of us together. Uh, so when we entered, the doctor saw Sophia, checked her out. He was like, for him, as long as she's not having any pain or any discomfort, uh, it's not really a problem, but he's going to refer her to a pediatrician in the hospital. So I was not like, no, no get pediatrician for a year. It has to be the main hospital. I was like, okay, that's fine. For me, about my hand, I told him everything. He checked me. That's another thing again that shocked me a little bit. He told me to remove my top. I was like, I did not know I was supposed to remove my top. Oh, I for just wear camisole. Okay, I was just wearing brown top. He told me to remove my top. But if I was wearing a camisole, it would have been less awkward for me. But anyway, so he 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 checked me. He he did a thorough checkup. Checked my chest, my back, my arms, my way, everything. He checked everything, and he was like, he's going to refer me to a a physiotherapist. Okay, so. He referred Sophia, Sophia to a pediatrician and referred me to a physiotherapist. And then he now did blood. He now referred, re, what they call it, recommended me for blood work, right? Because of the dizziness and sleepiness and all of that, that I was experiencing. Immediately after seeing the doctor, I went and booked to come and get my... You, that's on that thing. That's on that thing, okay? In Nigeria, if you're supposed to do blood tests... As you're leaving the doctor's office, you will go to the lab and go and get your blood drawn. But not here. Here, I left the doctor's office. I went and booked to now come back a different day and now get my blood drawn. But anyway, I booked it. I think it was like in two days or so. I'll be the next day. No, it was in two days. I was supposed to come back and get my blood drawn. So I came back in two days. They took my blood. It didn't take long. They took my blood. Um, but kudos to the person that took my blood because normally... In Nigeria, I've had few doctors that, you know, did it right. But most times, they must chuk-chuk me before they find my vein. When I say chuk-chuk, I mean at least three places. And I'll just be like, what the hell? Because you know that if they don't chuk you in your vein, it's painful. So I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> they took my blood. They ran the test. And when my test results came out, they called me and told me my test results. So my test results showed that I had low iron like serious low iron like my blood was <laughs> drying up <laughs> no not really but my iron levels were very very low okay according to what she said so now ask me why you call me and you tell me that i have very low iron levels and that's it no prescription for any medication no oh go and start eating meat i mean i know what to do now because i've done my research before I know what to do, right? So, but they never, the hospital never told me what to do. Neither did they even recommend or prescribe any medication for me, which was kind of shocking. I'm not even saying that, oh, they must give me the medication. I know that here they don't give you. They'll prescribe and you go and get it from a pharmacy. So I'm not saying they should have given me medication, but at least prescribe now. I was thinking, okay, maybe they want me to book because in my hospital in Nigeria, you don't, the lab will not even call you or anything. Like they won't tell you your results. What they do is, you have to book back to see the or to see the, the doctor. Then the doctor will now tell you your results and tell you what to do. Then he will now be the one to uh, prescribe medication for you. Then you go to the pharmacy in the hospital there and you get your drugs and you'll be on your merry way. No long, long talk. No waka go, waka come. No, no go and come for blood or anything. The only thing that takes long with blood work is if they are doing like a very comprehensive blood work and you, it might take a few hours, okay? Sometimes they might tell you to come another day, but rarely. But they never told me to go and book an, any appointment. They never said anything about it. I mean, I wasn't really bothered. I was like, see, maybe it's just low iron, Abi. No wahala. I'll go and do my research and see what I'm going to do to help it on my own. I'm just like, I beg. And funny enough, that thing shocked me a little bit because I've never really had issues with my iron levels. I remember even when I was pregnant with my kids, anytime I go for antenatal and they check my blood, they're always telling me, oh, you're doing well. Whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Even though I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> I don't think I was doing anything particularly. So when they now told me here that my levels were very, very low, I was like, ah, so how did, what happened? What changed, right? But I didn't want to know what changed. All I know is that thank God they found out why I was sleeping like a pregnant woman. I was, I was, yeah, it was just my iron levels. Even though I feel like it's more than my iron levels though. I feel like my iron levels is part of it. But, you know, the environment and things that were happening to me at that time too was making it worse. But yeah, so I've been taking 
iron supplement since then but i still feel tired though in fact right now i'm going through another thing that i'm going to just you guys next year okay like I, I, this is my first time of announcing that i'm going through something in real time but yes you guys i am going through something right now but i will tell you guys about it next year so just subscribe to my channel and just stay tuned <laughs> for that gist but anyway that's it about the dozing off and you know my iron levels and stuff but that part really annoyed me like you just called me now that i had this issue which is actually a serious issue i mean it's not a life and life or death situation it can be but it is not but still i feel like they should have at least tried to you know help help with the aftercare but it did not. No wahala. Now, for the joint one, my shoulder issue, I went to see the, the uh, what they call the name, the physiotherapist, okay? So, when it, everything was still in that medical practice, I have not gone to the real hospital. I hope to never go to the real hospital because, let me tell you guys something here. As much as they'll say, oh, Nigeria is not good. Hospital is better in abroad. I don't even want to know which one is better. I don't want anything to carry me to the hospital. I'm sorry. I don't want to know whether we, they have the all the equipment. I don't want to know. I don't. I don't want to have to know. I don't want to let me not let them let them not use my body to test whether Nigeria or UK is better. I don't want to have anything to go to do with the hospital. That's just my prayer. So I went to see the physiotherapist, and this time I was prepared. Okay, I was prepared. I wore my camisole because I was like, what the hell? What the hell? <laughs> I was very, very prepared for him. Even mentally, I was prepared to remove my clothes, okay? <laughs> because when you're not prepared, it can be annoying. So when I got there, it was a, a male doctor as well. Um, he checked me, told me to do some stretches, some exercises, some maneuvers. He told me to do all of these things. And he was like, okay, from what he's seeing, the issue did not spread beyond my shoulder. And also, I still have, you know, adequate movement with my motto. Although, right, well, basically, I don't, I don't know the jargons. Basically, it's just my shoulder and I could help it with exercises. Because at that point, when I went to see him, mind you, this was just like last month, I did two months ago. Let's just say two months ago, right? Something I've been dealing with since December. At that point, the pain had already reduced significantly. Coupled with the fact that I was taking magnesium supplements i was always rubbing magnesium oil on it i was always doing exercises i used to take painkillers here and there even though i tried to stop taking the painkiller because i was like this is what makes people get hooked on painkillers anyway so he just told me that since the pain has reduced significantly that i should do certain exercises he give, he even printed out the exercises for me that i should be doing constantly just to help with the muscles there and the joints and everything but that if the pain became more severe, I should come back immediately to the hospital and, you know, see him or see them or whatever. So, um, but me, I was like, I'm not coming back here in Jesus' name. Like, this pain is going to go. I even prayed about it. In fact, to be honest, I think I've been praying about it before. But after seeing the doctor, I was like, I don't want to come back here in Jesus' name. Like, I now prayed. I was like, God, I beg, I beg. I don't want to do with anything. Like, because at the end of the day, right... There are things that we don't have a choice. We have to deal with because we live in this world and we are human beings. So there are things like, for instance, I have kids. So I have to constantly take care of my kids. I don't have a choice, right? I don't want to have any other physiological or physical issue that will now make that one more difficult. Do you understand? It's difficult enough to have kids and take care of them. Then imagine now doing it with illness or pain or, or bone, whatever. Eh, 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 eh. The arm is fine. I, I didn't even do the exercises, so funny enough, <laughs> I did not do them. I tried. God will help me, sir. I need to start exercising. I tried, though. I think one day I stood. I did the first five he, 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 I saw there. Then I now got distracted and that was it. So I never really did the exercise. But once in a while, I still move my hand and do all those things I used to do. But for some reason, after I saw the doctor and I said that prayer, I, I even forgot about the pain safe. So now let's go to Sophia's part, okay? Sophia was referred to a pediatrician. Okay, good. Now, tell me why they called me or they called us and told us that there's no appointment. Actually, they called my husband and there's no appointment until 12 weeks or 11 weeks or something like that. Like, there's literally no slots for them to see her until 11 weeks. <laughs> I was just like, when I don't start, when I don't, now this, now this thing now they hear about, the, now, now this same issue I they hear all the time about this medical system, about them not having slots. And it's not just a Nigerian thing. It's not just a UK thing. It's also a Canada thing, right? Where I think because they have they do this national health and all of that, because it's free, quotes, that's part of why, right? So basically, they're saying that 
there's no slot for them to see my Sophia for 11 weeks. Now, I can't even remember if that 11 weeks has even reached and passed. I feel like it has reached and passed. So we got a letter later on telling us that, not 11 weeks, so 17 weeks. I remember. Or oh, was it 11 weeks? I can't remember. But anyway, I said I remember, now I remember. But anyway, all I know is that they said whether if he gets to 17 weeks and she doesn't get a slot, they will have to re reschedule her or do something or whatever. Basically, all the jargons, all the English that we are speaking there just says, we ain't going to see your child. Point blank period. Eh? Go, stop going through the corners. Just come out directly and say it. We ain't going to see your child. Okay, so they say, oh, we try not to give appointments for too long or to allow people this, that, that. So if after this, if the, I, I can't see, that letter is still upset. I just saw the, the first few lines. I was like, I beg, nonsense. Okay, I was like, rubbish. And I just left it, right? I, again, like I said, I don't want to use my child or myself to be knowing whether they are good or they are not good. I don't, I don't want to know. I don't want to have to know, okay? Because at the end of the day, it's God that still protects us, okay? At the end of the day, you can go to a hospital that has all the equipment. People know they die for there. With all the equipment, the best doctors trained in Harvard, trained in this one medical school, trained in India, trained in China. You can have that same person come there and make a very stupid rookie mistake. Aside even mistake, things can just go wrong all of a sudden, okay? So I am not putting my hope in medical professionals. I'm not putting my hope in the medical system. My hope is on God, the author and finisher of my faith, okay? That is who I rely on. That is who I keep my hope on. And that is who I feel like all of you should actually put your hope on. Don't put your hope on, oh, I've jackpot to the UK. Uh, the medical system here is better. It doesn't matter. Like, things can still go wrong if they want to go wrong. But yes, I agree, oh, that it's good that you have those things. It's good that you're in a place where the medical system is good, it's working, it's functioning, it's helpful, blah, 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 blah. I, I, I'm, I mean, I would choose that over being in Nigeria, right? Where And I'm comparing public sector to public sector. I'm not comparing just medical in general because in Nigeria, as far as I'm concerned, I was going, I had the best hospital. So I'm not comparing private there with public here. I'm comparing public to public. However, no be when you access them. No be when they when they give you fees, when they see you. <laughs> no be when they see you. So for minor issues, like I mentioned, 10 over 10, 100 over 100, I applaud them for minor issues. But for the serious issues, for even for even the slightly serious issues, because how we looked at someone that she has very, very low iron levels, and that's it. No, if I even had to ask the the uh, 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 physiologist, what's his name, physiotherapist, I asked him that. They told me my iron levels are low. He was like, okay, yeah, your doctor will discuss it with you. Maybe he will come in tomorrow. Maybe as I finish this video now, I will see the call that I'm supposed to come and talk to the doctor. Or maybe I'm supposed to go and book it myself, but I don't really care. Um, so yeah, another thing I'll advise you guys is try and get at home medical kits. Okay, so if you have a blood pressure issue, or if you have blood pressure issues, um, go and have a blood pressure machine. Thankfully, I've never had blood pressure issues, even from the, even when I was even with all my pregnancies, I've never had high blood pressure. It has always been the same. In fact, I can almost predict the number all the time. So I'm grateful for that. But even at that, we still have the the um, we still have the machine here. And sometimes I wear my wristwatch that tells me my heart rate and stuff like that. Okay, even though I don't really check it that often, but you know, at least I have those things. Then someone told me that there's an, an at home um, iron level checker, like what do they call it? Tests, not checker. Test <laughs> at home iron level test that you can get it and just check your iron levels. And if it's low, you know that you should you know keep. Um, amp up your eating or your whatever so you know get that if you're someone who suffers from diabetes or pre-diabetes or whatever then go and get um, the, all those blood sugar monitors and stuff like that get it then do your research okay about everything also eat right <laughs> if you want to eat rubbish in this country it's the easiest thing like abroad if you want to eat rubbish the, that's the easiest thing to find here that's the cheapest thing that's the easiest thing to find here rubbish food okay like literal legit rubbish garbage food <laughs> packaged nicely if you want to eat that you will get it very well here i'm not saying i don't eat junk i mean i can't even lie it's obvious i do eat junk i do eat rubbish sometimes but i'm now more conscious about it i'm now trying really 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 hard to Stay away from some of those things, all those seed oils, all those excessive sugar, all those excessive processed food. I'm trying hard to stop them, but not just stop them. I'm trying hard to increase my intake of the healthy foods like protein, um, vegetables and stuff like that, okay? Because 
here you have to use food and heal yourself. If not, your hospital will have to heal you. And you don't want to trust, you don't want to put your trust in the hospital, okay? So you have to try and use food to heal yourself. You have to try and um, avoid situations that can be detrimental to your health. So if you're a kind of person that you're smoking, you're always drinking, just stop it. It's not worth it, okay? There's no health benefits whatsoever. There's no even benefit whatsoever to all those things, okay? But I'm saying if you're someone that drinks excessively or you smoke excessively or you do anything excessively, please stop it, okay? You don't want to have to use yourself to test whether medical system they work up, you know they work. You don't want to have to do that, okay? The same thing goes for even physical activities that can that can, that can be dangerous. You are driving recklessly. You are doing. You are running. You are doing anything recklessly, or you are always going to play football. You don't know how your heart is. You don't do. You don't go for medical checkups. <laughs> it can be detrimental. You can collapse one day on the field, right? Yes, they will. Ha they can have easy first aid uh, treatments here. I think they are well. They are very good with first aid here, sharp. Because even when you are doing even ordinary driving tests, they will telling you what to do just in case, right? So I think here they are more health conscious. They are more human conscious. They are more you know sympathetic to the human plight. However, again, no use yourself test whether it they work hundred percent of the time. Okay, don't don't use yourself to be checking whether you see that each time somebody collapses, the person gets the adequate help. Are you don't 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 use yourself to gamble that gamble. Um, so that's my advice to everybody. Yes, medical system here is good. Is is it is it worth it? Yes, it's worth it. But is it as good as we hype it up to be? Uh no, no. For me personally, I'm somewhere in between. It's better than Nigeria, but it's not the best ever. That's how I feel. Um, let me know in the comment section if you have used the medical system here, what you used it for. If you are, if if you be here for years or months or whatever, let me know your thoughts. Do you think that it is worth the hype? Is it overhyped or is it adequately hyped or is it underhyped? Let me know in the comment section. Okay, so this video, who is going to edit it now? Who is going to sit down now? Start watching this video again and be saying, "Oh yeah, remove this part. Oh yeah, add this part. Oh yeah, this video is long. Like, cut who is going to do that work? People <laughs> are not serious in this place." <laughs> Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Did you guys enjoy this video? I'll see you all in my next one. Bye, guys.